Welcome to True White Allies, where we celebrate the forgotten history of white anti-racists so their stories can inspire you to take action today. This episode tells the story of Joseph Sturge, an Englishman who organized the world's first anti-slavery convention and even had a place in Jamaica named after him. Joseph Sturge was born in 1793 in Elberton, Gloucestershire. It was also the year the Bank of England issued the first five pound note. He was successful as a businessman, but in 1831, Joseph left the business to his brother Charles and he began to focus on social causes. In 1807, the abolition of the Slave Trade Act made it illegal to engage in the slave trade in Britain. Unfortunately, it continued because enslaved people within the British Empire were still not free. Then, in 1833, the Slave Emancipation Act was passed, and it gave all enslaved people in the British Empire their freedom. Slave owners received compensation for losing their slaves. The equivalent of about £17 billion today, which Britain borrowed. Yep, you heard that right. Also, the government only finished paying this off in 2015. University College London has a database where you can see who was compensated. The Act also created an apprenticeship system that meant that freed slaves had to continue to work for their former owners as apprentices. According to the Act, field hands were apprenticed for six years, household labourers for four years, and children below six years old were immediately freed. Oh, how gracious. At least children under the age of six were exempt. This was known as gradual emancipation. And the idea was that enslaved people were being taught how to be free. So, still slavery. In some of the Caribbean islands, like Antigua, the slave owners realised that it was cheaper to pay the apprentices a salary rather than feed and house them. So they freed them. But not everyone was willing to do that. And this was what Joseph Sturge was fighting against. He wanted immediate, not gradual emancipation. Between 1834 and 1837, Joseph Sturge sailed to different islands in the Caribbean. His goal was to observe the apprenticeship system, expose its unfairness, and push for immediate abolition. During his travels, he talked directly to apprentices, plantation owners, and anyone else involved. And when he returned to Britain, he published what he had learned in books that detailed the abuse apprentices still faced under this new system. People were flogged until they bled, locked away in dungeons, and even starved. Joseph Sturge also worked with free people to help them own homes and build their communities through free villages. At the time, plantation owners refused to sell land to free people. Free villages were areas of land that were bought mainly by missionaries with the help of their contacts in Britain. It was a way for them to ensure that free people had their community that wasn't under the control of plantation owners. I love it! Using loopholes to do the right thing instead of evading tax. Sturge Town was founded in 1838 as a free village, and it still exists today in Jamaica. After Joseph Sturge published his books, he and the more radical abolitionists called for an end to the apprenticeship system. The emancipation date was moved to the 1st of August, 1838, which freed thousands of people. Even after this big win, Joseph still carried on his work. In 1840, Joseph Sturge organised the world's first anti-slavery convention in London. Technically at the time, women weren't invited, but they still came anyway. Good job, ladies. At the convention, they discussed international actions to end slavery. Joseph Sturge believed that slavery could only be ended through international legislation. He travelled to the US and spoke at meetings, lectures and churches, calling on people to work together for emancipation. Fun fact, Joseph's sister Sophia was also an abolitionist and she supported immediate abolition. Sophia founded the Birmingham Ladies Society for the Relief of Slaves, which had national influence. When she died in 1845, Joseph named his daughter after her. Sophia Sturge grew up to be a peace campaigner, advocate for women's rights, and supported the Irish Home Rule Movement, a movement that campaigned for Ireland to govern itself. I guess sometimes it does run in the family. What can white people who want to be allies learn from Joseph Sturge? We must hold our leaders accountable for eliminating racist laws and creating anti-racist ones. Find organisations working to tackle inequality in your community and support them. When coming up with any solutions to tackle inequality, make sure you're speaking to the people affected by it. You need to ensure that the answers you're coming up with support and not hinder progress. Hi, I'm Naomi Bowman, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and share with two white people you think would benefit from watching it.